Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today it's gonna be an excellent macro game between Clem and Raynor here on Golden Wall, the latter edition. Couldn't quite find a good series for the Sunday series t today. For which I apologize. If there's a series you want me to cast that I haven't already done, let me know in the comments. And I'll see if I can cast it for you. I read every single comment and give them hearts if I feel like it and respond if I feel like it. But I read every single one. Bottom left hand corner. It is the Red Terran player, Clem. He is young. He is Italian. He is excellent at StarCraft. And in the bottom right, it is Raynor. He is blue and Zergen also very young and excellent at StarCraft. So two up and coming terrifying Young talents here in the StarCraft scene, both from the EU scene, both doing really well in tournaments that feature Korean players. This is not something where it's like, oh, they're good in the EU, give them a gold star. No, 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 no. They are they are good compared to everybody in the entire world. So let's see. Let's see who's going to come out on top here. Uh, Golden Wall is kind of a cheesy map. Right? It's really good for mining down your back wall and then walking across. Doo -doo -doo -doo, walking across. Doo -doo -doo -doo, and then suddenly you're here at your opponent's base. You went out their wall, they're dead. They don't see it coming. Nobody ever scouts back here. Just kidding. The pros scout back here all the time because they know what's up. Anyway. Alright, we've got a Reaper on the way. The Reaper's name is a shady sponsorship company. Come on, Falcon. Ad advertise. Redacted. We promise it's not a gambling machine, mobile game, data selling, VPN malware. We will give you money. We promise we will totally pay you after you mention us and won't stop returning your emails as soon as we're done with you. <laughs> wow, that's some rough stuff. You may have noticed I've never actually advertised for anything on this channel before. Huh, not to say I haven't had offers, but let me tell you that there are a lot of products out there that I'm just not interested in advertising for at all. Anyway, you can probably guess what one of those ones would be. Reaper moving on out. We got some lings in production. We have some queens ready to pop out of them hatches in just a second here. Expansion on the way from Clem. Got a factory on the way from Clem too. Probably going to get a starport. Nothing too crazy here at all from either of these players. Although the Terran could still be going for battle cruiser. That's the thing. If you scout now a Zerg, you're like, oh yes, well everything's fine. This maybe isn't a battle cruiser. I don't know. It's just it's too far down the tech path to be like at the two and a half minute mark. You can tell what the Terran player is doing. Sure, double gas could definitely indicate battle cruiser, but it doesn't have to. Definitely doesn't have to. Boop, boop, ba -doo. So two queens out. Third base from Raynor needs to get started. I'd say about now, at the latest. This is a terrible base or terrible map for thirds, because the Reaper can definitely delay it. It's just down a ramp and up a ramp and really far away, and your slow lings can't do anything to stop him, and your queens can't do anything to stop him. Unless they slow walk their way over there, which is totally annoying. So yeah, either Raynor is just delay, delay, delaying. I mean, he's droning up and getting extra queens and stuff. He is preparing for a potential uh, potential battle cruiser just because his queen count is so nuts. But Clem's on two bases, yo. Clem is happily on two bases. Two mules pumping out all the time. Let's see what happens after the starport. Do we get a fusion core? Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to be a Viking, so that's super cool. Queen's trying to spread that creep out. Third base does manage to just get down. What on earth? How did he do that? Sorry, guys. We're doing this. I guess the Reapers are making sure... That's the thing. There are a couple places you could take thirds on this map. But yeah, Reaper moves out, and in the tiny, tiny window, that's when the drone comes up. God, it's so good. All right, nicely done. Nicely done by Rainer. He gets the third base up at 3.30, which is about a whole minute after he wants to, but I don't know. I think Rainer can handle setbacks pretty well, in all honesty. Yeah, I don't have any complaints about it. So that tumor needs to survive. I really think Rainer needs this thing to live, which is why he has three queens right next to it. Okay, going to spread the creep out. Connecting the three bases shouldn't be too difficult at this stage of the game. Still no lair. And uh, Overlord speed is done, so he really wants to know if this is Battle Cruiser or what. The Overlord comes in, says, "Okay, so there's a Viking. There's not a Tech Lab on the starport, and I don't see a Fusion Core anywhere. So it's not going to be Battle Cruisers. It's going to be some more standard stuff at this point. Still don't know what it is though. Like Clem is still, still hiding his intentions from us, and maybe he's trying to get a read on what the Zerg player is up to first. But 
There's nothing indicating what Rainer's doing either. He doesn't have a lair. He doesn't have a Baneling Nest or a Roach Warren. He's got two evolution chambers, which again, could be used for anything. It could indicate anything at all. I guess it means it's probably not going to be like mass mutilesque because evolution chambers are useless in that situation, but. Huh. Yeah, this is the stage of the game where I don't know what uh, what to expect from anybody. Although that is a second barracks. Okay, so we're going to do some bio here for Clem. Two barracks. Three barracks indicates bio for sure. Third CC coming up here from Clem. Our Reaper is still alive. The shady sponsorship companies are a bit like cockroaches, y'all. It is hard to take them down. But yeah, so far, I mean, Rainer droning his face off. His income is starting to reflect that, as we can see on that tab. That's a lot. That is a lot of Hellions, though. So, these aren't YOLO Hellions, but, you know, a couple of them are going to die. So, for them, they only live once. The Reaper is still alive. And, oh, that line, that was good. That was really nicely done. A couple drones go down there in exchange for a couple, uh, couple Hellions. That Reaper's got a kill. Shady Sponsorship Company has a kill. Goodness. That is better than, I'd say, the average Reaper on this channel. Getting a kill as a Reaper is dead impressive. Yeah, barracks, 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 barracks. 1-1 one, one on the way from Clem, starting at about five and a half minutes. And Rainer's response here is, let's get a Baneling Nest. We're dealing with Bile. Let's get 1-1 one, one for our Lings and Banelings. Let's drone so hard, we're going to blot out the sun. Get a fourth base in the top right-hand corner. Oh, yeah. Oh, also, if you're enjoying the StarCraft 2 stuff, uh, later on today, today on Sunday at about 3 p.m. Eastern, I will be playing the StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty Brutal campaign. So come say hi. I'm going through it on Brutal. It's it's an exciting thing. I do I like to do it every year or so. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's challenging for me. There are levels that just make me want to die, but that's just because I don't really main Terran. I should probably be better at Terran, but it's fine. Just make stuff. That's that's how this works. Just make stuff. Baneling drops. Going to sneak their way on over. Third base up for Clem at the gold. Like this position here. The Zerg player can't do much about this unless... Well, unless they have drops, which they do. So this is interesting. Is he going to try to... I feel like he's going to try to sneak it into this third base mineral line. But check out the Liberator. Hello! Fancy seeing you in this part of the nation. I guess it's only a map, though. Everybody get out of there. This over... Man, that's such bad timing. That is such bad luck. Oh, but he has to unload all of the Banelings because the Overlord's going to die. And the Banelings are like, what do we do? We don't even have speed. I guess we could hide back here and come out when we are least expected. Meanwhile, Clem says seven and a half minutes is enough time. Let's get rid of that creep. Let's push it back. Let's get Drilling Claws for the Widow Mines that I don't think exist yet. That is accurate. There are no Widow Mines yet, but hey, we're going to plan on it. Tank firing. Tank firing. Tanks. Ah, also getting surrounded a little bit there and absolutely destroyed by Zerglings and Queens. Yeah, it's a pretty good hold by Rainer. I got to say, both tanks died. Handful of Bios left. They're all pretty well overstimmed, but they got a Queen for their trouble, so that's nice. Uh, these four Banelings, are these going home? Oh, they're going to join another Dropper Lord. But guess who's here? Another Viking. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> These four Veilings, they're stuck. They're stuck back here. There's nowhere they can go. They're trapped. Trapped forever in an endless torment. Okay, endless boredom. I guess. Like, Banelings don't survive this long. They're kind of like Mr. Meeseeks from Rick and Morty, where if Banelings survive too long, they start getting weird. Banelings get built, roll around for a little bit, and then explode. That is their lot in life. They don't get to live for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, right? These guys, they're just, they're so lonely. At least they have each other. They just don't have much of a purpose right now. Fourth base coming up for Clem on that left side. It is done and upgrading to an orbital. Actually, planetary on that fourth. That makes sense. The fourth base timing is generally a planetary in these games. Fifth base for Rainer coming up here to the north side of the map. And 1-1 one, one is done. Oh, there's Lurkers out. Okay, so Raider's going to Lurker this thing. Also, Vipers. Also, the range upgrade 
for our lurkers coming in here too at nine and a half minutes. So we're at 160 supply. We've got a bunch of lurkers out. Really good against smaller numbers of bio. And smaller numbers of tanks. He's really just trying his hardest <laughs> to drop these bailings somewhere. This. <laughs> Uh, all right, okay. They accomplished. They killed three SCVs. There we go. They accomplished a thing. Their friends up north are accomplishing things more quickly because, again, if you're on this side of the map on Golden Wall, you have more opportunity generally. This drop. Yeah, it's doing okay. Not the greatest thing I've ever seen. But Permacloak on that Widow Mine, by the by, that does have 11 kills. Most of them are wings, I think. Not that Rainer's much worried about it. So we're just dropping Widow Mines all over the place. I kind of appreciate this. Medivac dies, but Widow Mine takes out a queen. All right, all right. Pretty good stuff. This Viking has seven kills. Is it going to get a Viper? It might could get a Viper, but Vipers are pretty zippy. And he's not being microed at all, so... Overseer, Overseer, oh, Overseer with 2 HP, still alive. Meanwhile, main base attack, pretty rough stuff. There's a reason the Hive is not here, and it's because of this. It's too easy to drop the main base here on Golden Wall. Uh, Hydralisk Den may be in trouble, but unloading directly onto a gajillion Zerglings with 2-2 two -two is not going to work out very well at this stage of the game. Oh, they're so... The lurkers are so good. All right, so we're going to do lurker stuff. Ten lurkers out. This widow mine has still not been cleaned up. It's got six kills. Finally, Overseer wanders in and takes care of it. A couple changelings, Rainer dropped over on the right side. Make me feel like there's a drop happening, but there is not. Widow mine's taking care of that Overseer. Not bad at all. Lem trying to go up this ramp. There are lurkers and hiders and lings and mainlings here, though. Rainer barely manages to hold. Gets some transfuses on those lurkers, which is nice. Top left-hand corner by Clem is being taken. This is a big map. This map does have a lot of places you can expand. So if we manage to get to the point where this map gets mined out, I will be ecstatic. That is one of my favorite, favorite situations. And StarCraft is when maps are mined out and suddenly every unit matters a whole lot more than it did before, it feels like. And even Zerg starts taking care of their units more effectively. Nobody really wants to engage. It's a crazy situation and I enjoy it a lot. So does Marine Marauder uh, Widow mine? What are you? Wow. Okay. Parasitic Bomb gets tossed down, but both Vipers die for one Parasitic Bomb that gets tossed on one medevac. It doesn't even take anything down. Yeah, see, the problem with going lurkers against bio is that bio's fast. Even if the lurkers jump on top of you and burrow, the stim and run away scenario is pretty good for Terran. They don't have to take a lot of damage if they don't want to. The tanks can't run. And so if you're trying to take out tanks with this, yes, it's going to be awesome. And Clem is definitely on, uh, on top of, well, trying to get his tank position up that way, but Rainer knows what's up. On that one. No transfuses available. There's no queens out here. The creep spread is not that good to allow the queens to get up in this area. But, yeah, this is scrappy. And hence, Shockwave is on the way from Clem. Got ourselves a bit of an attempt to drop towards the main base. But Rainer shuts that down pretty effectively. He really should mine out this back door at some point. If just to allow him to get back there and kind of protect that area. Because right now, you just unload here as Terran, and there's really not much Clem can do to stop you from existing down that way. Sixth base from Clem. Seventh base here from Rainer. So both players keeping a pace on their base count. Uh, the Marauder, So the Marauders are interesting versus Lurkers, right? They take bonus damage from the Lurkers because they are armored. They also do bonus damage to the lurkers because they're armored. It's like the immortal lurker relationship. Yeah, steady targeting getting tossed down here. I'm not sure that two... Okay, the lings are a more of a problem. Little mines get wiped out and trying to run from the situation here. Trying to split as best he can. 
Flem is pretty good with a small handful of units. That he just needs to micro to within an inch of his life to make anything happen. And he does. He gets out of there. Oh, the abduct on the full medevac. Ow. Another one is here, but the planetary fortress should be able to hold temporarily. Lurkers with that range upgrade, which these lurkers do have, do outrange the planetaries. So they don't really want to engage with lurkers at all. You need some support here to make sure the lurkers don't just set up siege and ruin everybody's day. Widow Mine's trying to slow this push, but at the same time getting picked off pretty effectively. Steady targeting, though. Yeah. All right, all right. Several lurkers are going down here. Oh, abducting the ghosts into the lurker hydra ball. That's some terrifying stuff. But reinforcements show up from Clem and shove that away. Really, really nicely done. So we are working on... Oh, did the marauders take down this base? Those marauders took down this base. Nice job, Marauders. These four Marauders have been heroes today. One of four, They got seven total kills. See, and then you unload back here and you heal up. Because still, there's... No, okay, finally mining through here. Creep getting pushed back. Clem is really giving everything he's gotten here. Rainer is ranked higher in Oligulac than uh, Clem is. But Clem is very capable of winning this game. I got to tell you, he's made some really good choices here today. Resources lost are 21,000 for Rainer and only 16,000 for Clem. And they're on equal base count. So, I mean, income-wise, they're not in a terrible position. They're pretty even across the board here. So, the fact that Rainer has lost more does not bode well for Clem. Although, this little surround... Ah, the Lings preventing the surround... Preventing the retreat, rather. Zerglings eating up those Wodemine shots just one at a time, which is exactly how you want to do it. Oh, that was a big Widow Mine hit. Baneling's going down there as well. Steady targeting on the Corruptors, on the Hydras, on whatever the Ghost can find here. It's really tough micro if you're Clem to do that. But he's pulling it off and making it look fairly easily, getting several Snipes off at the same time. I know it's steady targeting, but Snipes is so much easier to say because it's one syllable, and steady targeting is five. Man, hit that like button if you're enjoying this game. This has been nuts. We're pretty much even at the stage. I know Rainer's effectively maxed out. But Clem's at 180 supply. I think he's got a pretty decent answer here. Call oh, EMP on the Vipers. He's got an answer to the Lurkers. Answer to the Vipers. Clem is making this strategy of Rainer's look a little bit less effective. Really wants to get this Lurker, but he got on creep and got that speed boost. Yeah, Rainer's seventh base. Might be in a little trouble. Oh. oh, the snipes. Oh, my gosh, the snipes. Get that one. Oh, they just regular targeted that one. Bailing's running away, not what they want to do. Both players finally starting to expand down to the southern section of the map as every base up north is being taken right now. That said, this does not exist yet. That is not a hatchery. And Clem oh, forces a cancel from distance. I don't think Clem was even actively attacking that thing. Yeah, I don't know if this Hydro Lurker thing is going to be working out, to be honest with you. Out of Rainer, he might need to text switch into something else. Clem's going for the Medivac upgrade. Which, I forget exactly what it does because nobody ever gets it. Rapid Reignition System. I think it just means that you can use the boost on the Medivac sooner after using it once, right? So the cooldown is reduced. I don't know that I've, like, when they announced it, I was like, I can't think of a time that a Terran was needed that, right? Needed a second boost to get away from something, and it would have made a difference. So there is a reason we never see it at all used here. The abduct into Corruptor stuff here from Rainer is just classically incredible. One ninety six to one ninety supply at eighteen minutes. This has been insane today. How many lurkers have died today? Should we look? Forty lurkers have died today. That's a large part of the thirty seven thousand resources lost for Rainer. Rainer decides it's time to go for it. Banelings crashing in. They don't do bonus damage versus ghosts. So you know what? I don't know if that was the best use of Banelings here. The Corruptors are doing some major trouble 
against everything that flies here. Medivacs are a good target. Liberator's a great target. Steady targeting from the ground is against the Corruptors. They can't defend themselves against that. That's where the Lings and the Banelings come in. But yeah, at this stage, it is equal base count. It is exactly... No, you know what? Clem has more bases. Clem has more bases than Raynor does. If you're trying to beat Raynor, I almost feel like step one here needs to be have more bases than Raynor has. Ling attack to the bottom left. Really can't take down this planetary, but maybe can get some SCVs. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Some SCVs will go down here, which, sure. Uh, oh, Liberator sets up. Gets six kills on the way bottom right. That is hard to see on the minimap. And then five SCVs die. Not a big deal. So, Clem, he's up, man. 188 to 180 supply. This kind of ghost... Almost a mass ghost with Marina Marauder support thing here is interesting. The Liberator's getting some really nice hits on these Lurkers, too. But the full surround, left side, right side, top side. The low ground Lurkers are amazing. The Corruptor Ball is enough, and Clem is forced to retreat. Rainer is doing some really nice plays. Going for full surrounds here, and he's kind of committed to this strategy. I don't think he can tech into anything else right now. I'm trying to think of what else would make sense. Do you want to try to go into Mutalisks? Maybe. This is more... That was more Liberator stuff. Spore Crawler took it down. Yeah, the Lurkers with range and that quick burrow, unburrow are just so much better. So much better than Lurkers without it. They are two necessary upgrades just like the Hydra stuff. If you're making Hydras, they need the range upgrade and the uh, speed upgrade. They're just not nearly as good. Another base coming up here from Clem. Really trying to take this Gold Rainer for the third time today. It's not gone well for him thus far. Corruptors. God, just being a nuisance in this game. They're not going to win the game, but they will definitely change some stuff. Make it harder for the Terran to win. Liberator setting up on the not even completed uh, gold base yet here that Rainer's trying to go for. And we've kind of moved the battle arena to the southern half of the map. There's a lot of lurkers down here. Yeah, the constant liberators setting up here have been really nice too. That's a total of 38 drones killed for 8 SCVs down. 8 of them during this attack. I think we saw most of them die in this game. This is a fairly big army coming in here, but Planetary Fortress support, Widow Mine support, Ghosts for the Snipe. Yeah, I think Rainer was right to get on out. Plus, okay, so... <laughs> we are... Oh, the Snipes are so good! All right, so gold base is mined out here. I think Clem is okay with losing it. He's going to keep the uh, uh, orbitals here, which is a huge deal. Lings trying to find other stuff to destroy. Oh, they got right on top of some new brand new ghosts, though. You know, it'd be nice. I was gonna say if the ghosts have cloak. I think Clem had the same thought, and he decided that he needs cloak for his ghosts. So they can't be target fired or killed by stuff if there's not detection, y'all. All right, so Lings had cleaned up, but Clem had to send a bunch of stuff back home. Uh, lurkers trying to s unsupported lurkers, not very good. As it turns out. I think they're just trying to get home. Maybe force a lift off on these orbitals. Steady targeting. Alright, one ghost dies, but all four lurkers die. That's a good trade. If you're Clem. So personal cloaking is done, which means the ghosts can be invisible. Which is very, very useful. And a nuke on the way. We're gonna see nukes. You've got to be kidding me. We are really mining out here. Remember when I said earlier I wanted this to get mined out? I recall. As Raider sets up a bit of a surround. Coming in here again. Lings on the backside. Lurkers Corruptors from the bottom side. Blinding Cloud getting tossed down. Abducts happening. A lot of ghosts died there. That was a lot of death ghost sounds. 
56 of them have been killed in this game so far. What is killing drones? I don't even know. Is this another another Liberator? Sneaking on up here, getting seven drone kills. Raiders at 58 workers. It's not a great number. These orbitals do not get lifted. Oh, this one does. Armor supply 87 to 104. Clem is down, but not in a desperate situation. So nuke gets canceled. Base gets relanded. The problem with being cloaked is that splash damage will still damage you. So playing against lurkers, even if you're invisible as a ghost, there's no guarantee of anything in the long run. So Rainer finally gets this gold base up and running. He's oversaturating it. He's so eager to make it happen. There are still more bases here from Clem. We are running out of bases to take in this game, you guys. This is very close to getting an epic tag. It really is. Again, another surround. Raider is one of the best Zergs in the world at getting a full surround on your army and then just crushing it. So here's where the follow-up is. Does... I don't know. Raynor doesn't want to go down here. It's not that well defended. It feels a little bit too cautious from the Zerg player, in my opinion. That orbital is down. Lings, again, are such a great answer to the slower numbers of bio. Right? The Zerglings with plus three attack, plus three armor, and adrenal are just so good against ghosts, marines, and marauders, assuming they're not in huge numbers, as they're really not. Hydra is doing some good work here as well. Army supply 100 to 70. Clem is producing per fairly effectively there, though here. He's trying to remax. He's trying to get out on liberators, marines, marauders, and ghosts. They've been his friends here today. Raynor mm, trying to set up a bit of a killing blow right now. Raynor does not have much gas at all. He's making two hiders, but that's really all he can afford at this point in time. I mean, this is oversaturated. This is oversaturated. This is mined out. Mined out, mined out, mined out. I mean, we're looking at a lot of dead bases here at 26 minutes. These guys are macro gods, and they will have mined out their bases as quickly as possible because that's the most efficient way to play this game. If you don't mine out bases efficiently, you're not going to have the money to stay alive against somebody like Rainer for 26 minutes. Yeah, kind of like this mass zergling thing. Not even necessarily Banelings. There's not a ton of ground army here. That said, they are 3-3. They are Stim. They are Combat Shield. Rainer taking one of the remaining bases here on the map. It's going to come down to... These will be the minerals that are left on this map, which is insane. Another flank from the top side. The right side happening here, too. Every time Clem has pushed out recently... This has happened to him. The Zerglings are just getting so much work done. There aren't a lot of medevacs. The medevacs that are surviving are getting killed by corruptors. Nice Widowmine hit. Saving this bio. 17 kills on that Widowmine. A little bit careless from Raynor, but a pretty chaotic situation if you ask me. Quick plug for the Falcon Paladin store for merch. It's getting colder here in the Northern Hemisphere. You want a hat? You want a Falcon Paladin hoodie? Check it out. Falconpaladin.store is the entire website. Very easy to remember. Very easy to find. We will convert to your local currency. Make it easier to see how much stuff is. I know I have a worldwide audience. We made that happen. So check out Falconpaladin.store. And also, while you're at it, the Falcon Paladin podcast. It's actually called the Falcon Paladin Hour. We've been streaming it live out on twitch.tv slash somicron for the last few weeks. So if you want to see the podcast be made live... With facial expressions and everything, you can. Just twitch.tv slash somicron. Or you can always listen to it in the uh, in your podcast app, no matter where it is. Whether it's Apple or Android or Windows or who knows what. Just by searching Falcon Paladin. We're also on Spotify. Search Falcon Paladin hour there. Alright, so both players setting up. Ling Again, this Ling stuff though. Ooh, big Widowmine hit. That it, this lurker count today. It says 73 lurkers have died. The problem for Clem is that the resources lost have evened up. It's 68,000 to 68,000. We're even across the board for that. Hey, remember when I said Cloak would be coming in handy? Just right there. In handy. That guy didn't cloak. He had energy too. He just didn't cloak. Clem with a tiny army. This has gotten 
so, I don't know, so economic right now. Nobody's having huge maxed out scary armies. We're defending with a handful of Lurkers and Zerglings. We're defending with a handful of Ghosts, Marines, and Marauders. A bunch of Medivacs. In the sky here, too. The income has largely favored Clem over the last 10 minutes. And if you, again, you want to beat Raynor, you got to do this. You have to have a better economy than Raynor generally. The Ghosts know some of them are going to die. But they're willing to stand in to take down those Lurkers and those Corruptors. Plus, there's Medivacs to heal them anyway. Damage is temporary. Another Lurker goes down. EMP catching, I think, a Corruptor, which doesn't help because they don't have energy. That poor ghost got abducted. He done. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. Clem is up 50, 40 supply right now. If these Lurkers die, Raider's going to have a really hard time replacing them. Look at these rocks used, too, to hide behind. Lings, again, the Lings going for it from all directions here. Corruptor's trying to take out the flying stuff. Is there enough left over for Clem to win this particular battle? And you know what? The answer is yes! And Clem is your winner in 30 minutes and 27 seconds. Wow! That's what it came to. That is exactly what it came down to there was just more economy right here. This is how you win against Rainer. You have more bases than he can take. You almost mine out the entire map. You make better trades overall right here. And then just a bunch of steady targeting against his lurkers. Do the lurker count though? 82 lurkers died today. 82. That is the most lurkers I've ever seen dead. Let me tell you something about this game, by the way. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it, because holy smokes, that was awesome. All you people who are like, Zerg always wins everything. This is an example. This is why we watch. It's because you never know what's going to happen. Yes, Raynor was favored, but Clem pulled it out because he's boss. 86 ghosts died too. But I talk about this sometimes, but the replay size can generally tell you how long a game is. This is the longest replay from DreamHack Summer. It's over a meg in size, 1,000 kilobytes in size over that. Generally, replays are like 200 kilobytes, 400 kilobytes, maybe 600 kilobytes. For something to be 1,000 kilobytes means either it's really long or it's a 30-minute game between two incredibly good players and there's a million things happening all the time. And that's what this is. This is a one meg replay between two incredible players and it's 30 minutes. That is how good of a game this is. I'm giving it an epic tag. That was intense. There was not much left there from Clem at the end of the game. He ended with six ghosts and 23 marines and 13 marauders. It's not like it's a maxed out army or anything. It's a little bit scary, but shoot. Yeah, we mined the map out is what happened. Rainer knew if he lost access to this base, he didn't have anything else going for him. That final attack, though. So he's got the lings up north. I'm going to zoom it out a little bit. Yeah, it comes from the north. There's a widow mine that gets oh my gosh, it's a 30 kill widow mine. And this doesn't go as well up north here for Rainer as he wanted it to. And then suddenly there's just, just enough bio remaining, and Rainer has nothing left. He's got 16 lings and two queens and four hydras, and that's it. So just a disgustingly, disgustingly good game there. Three orbitals died. No hatcheries killed, which is a little bit strange. If you're going to beat a Zerg player like Raynor in 30 minutes, you almost have to kill some hatcheries. But he did cancel that one gold base two or three times. And I think that must have been enough for him. And then just made good trades the rest of the way. A lot of Widow Mines getting big time hits. A lot of Liberator harass on those drones. Again, a total of 58 drones were killed. That's some good number. I mean, it's not enough to win with it, but... Good stuff there. Uh, Viper is getting picked out of the sky here. 20 Corruptors killed. And then 1,108 Zerglings died today. <laughs> That's so many Zerglings. That is so many Lings. Wow. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed casting it. My StarCraft 2 view numbers are going down. And it makes me sad. But, man, I love StarCraft 2. It's, it's so fun. Brood War is so fun in different ways. And... I mean, to keep casting both of them. I, I don't know what else to tell you other than that. So, But for today, that's going to be it. This has been my Sunday series. I mean, not Sunday series, but 
a Sunday single cast, epic game between two incredible players. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and an epic game. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.